So, welcome back. Hello everyone to this turbulence modeling video. Uh, so, I'm going to continue in the discussion of the the run uh, IDD ES runs, or at least the DNS and LES runs I tried to run without much success. And I went through a lot of steps already, okay, uh, including the DPDT step, uh, all of these. So, uh, I was, at that time, I was uh, suspecting whether, you know, Pimple foam in general isn't well suited to uh, resolving turbulence because you know in DNS and LES there is a fair bit of turbulence that's being resolved and for LES uh, your ideal uh, setting is to resolve 80% of the turbulence 20% will be modeled okay so uh, when you have a resolved turbulence uh, you will generally oopsie you will generally have uh, turbulence uh, velocities going around like so the resolved velocity as such temperatures will also fluctuate uh, accordingly rather than you know it being modeled so uh all right i was thinking hey let, let's simplify the problem let's try doing something with pimple foam okay pimple foam uh pimple foam uh to resolve turbulence okay so we take the heat transfer out of the equation and see whether it runs so in fact there is a there's an interesting uh there are a fair number of uh, turbulence modeling done with pimple foam uh, and that actually helps a lot because uh, the the mesh size is pretty small okay we have a channel flow with a periodic boundary conditions and we have the mesh size is about x plus delta x plus equals 50 delta z plus equals 15.1 Delta Y plus equals 1.1. So this is really, really good, roughly LES mesh size. This, uh, this actually comprises about 1.8 to 2.4 million cells. Uh, and you can actually find it in foam tutorials. Okay. And incompressible uh, pimple foam. and you go to LES, you will see this thing called uh, channel 395 DFSEM. So channel 395 DFSEM. So this is actually where you will find your, uh, this is where you will find your, what do you call that? Uh, yeah, this is where you'll find your uh, uh, boundary conditions and you'll find a case where uh, turbulence is actually resolved. Well, I, didn't, I think they didn't use periodic boundary conditions fully. They used it for sites. So what, what they have is uh, you have a channel like so. You have fluid flowing in and out. So there's an inlet and an outlet boundary condition. Okay, there's an inlet and outlet boundary condition. The sites. Okay, so you have this sort of rectangle looking thingy. So... Uh, so at the sides, let's say, oops, sorry. Let's draw the other side first. To here, okay. So at the sides, at these sides, uh, these yellow bits, which I'm trying to highlight here, these two faces, the one closest to you and the one furthest away, so to speak. Okay. It's not as responsive as paint, but sure. Okay. So these two sides, this will be the periodic sides. The top and the bottom sides are wall. And over here in the inlet, it is a inlet kind of thing. This one is an outlet. So you have different boundary conditions for that. Okay, so in the inlet, you will actually have this thing called the DFSEM, it's the Divergence Free Synthetic Eddy Method. Okay, so that's what DFSEM means, and they will actually re uh, try to generate artificial turbulence where you have all these vortices and whatnot being generated at the boundary. So there's actually turbulence that's going on, and uh. And of course, I tried to reduce the the size of this uh, the mesh down to 
uh, Delta X plus so less than 40 okay and I ran it with the um, I ran buoyant pimple foam in, uh, no no buoyant pimple foam pimple foam in parallel okay so I ran it in the background and after a few days a week or two the thing actually runs well uh, so the 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 um, the equations the 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 foam what do you call it the uh, turbulent uh, equation the turbulence model it was a k equation and it works well with pimple foam in resolving all this turbulence so this was a very very stable thing okay uh, I ran it at various times with various quorant numbers and of course uh, from 31 to actually I, I started from 0 to 31 uh, seconds with a fixed time step of 0 0.004 and this CFL is actually, you know, another name for the Quran number. It was about 1.2. So it was still more than 1. So I wanted to shift it to something below 1. So max Quran number equals 0 0.5. From 31 seconds to 63.5 seconds, uh, I shifted the Quran number down. Uh, I made the Quran number, okay, uh, 0 0.5 max. And the time step adjusted. So... Uh, of course, your max Quran number, there is some oscillation with that, and buoyant, uh, no, not buoyant pimple foam. Pimple foam will try and adjust the time step to uh, the max Quran number of 0 0.5. But, uh, so this, this thing actually didn't blow up in any way. It, it uh, gave us the correct turbulence behavior after simulating for about uh, 85 seconds of simulation time. So actually, there was not too much of an issue with this uh, in simulating this uh, high-level uh, turbulence, okay? Um, so I was wondering, okay, if pimple foam works with uh, the with resolving a LES type mesh and you can resolve the turbulence, so could it be that, you know, the problem lies somewhere with the heat transfer? Because that, that apparently seems to be the problem. Okay, could it be that the, the heat transfer is an issue? So I tried to uh, run buoyant pimple foam such that the whole case is isothermal. So I want to eliminate uh, heat transfer and of course natural convection as a cause of this solver instability. However, I ran buoyant pimple foam, uh, copying IDDS case 2 and changing temperature boundary conditions all to 343 Kelvin. The solver crashed due to exponential CFL number, Quran number. So I tried the Renz type mesh, again it crashed, I don't know why, but uh, apparently when I re-ran the, the Renz case one, which worked before, it was uh, stable. Okay, basically, uh, basically, even when I when I shifted it to isothermal, this uh, solver crashed anyway. So yeah, so I ran I ran a test where this thing actually crashed. I think there was some bugs in between. I haven't fully you know uh, resolved this thing yet to see whether you know um, to see whether you know isothermal uh, case can run well. With this uh, refined mesh, because obviously when you when you have it in the 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 coarse mesh case, heat transfer can work. All the model uh, turbulence does work. Okay. Uh, so I was thinking, hey, maybe maybe there are some other other things that cause this pimple flame uh pimple foam uh, plain channel flow to be more stable, such as the you know inlet and outlet boundary conditions in, instead of cyclic. So uh, maybe uh, boundary conditions were one of the reasons for instability. I considered that, and when I when I tried that, when I tried this, uh, when I tried this uh, uh, case, uh, all right. So um, I suspect, uh, yeah. So I, I go through this whole process of trying to change the boundary conditions. So why my boundary conditions? The pressure boundary conditions are cyclic uh, at the cyclic boundary conditions, otherwise they are calculated. The PRGH, these, these are the pressure uh, without the hydrostatic component. Uh, inlet will be zero gradient, 
outlet will be some fixed value of pressure. Okay, uh, temperature boundary conditions, uh, inlet uh, boundary condition is 343 outlet. I think I, I made it zero gradient, but I didn't update it here. A zero gradient or some inlet outlet kind of a boundary condition. In other words, it is fixed. Then turbulence quantities, I changed the uh, change the um uh turbulence uh k omega SST to be based on some uh turbulence uh, quantity, which I did not uh, at all. I did not uh, try and uh, shift um shift make it too accurate. It was just a test for stability. Okay, and then omega as well. All the all the boundary conditions are put uh, talk here. You know, alpha t also is a is a calculator boundary condition because you're using a, a turbulent parental number uh, to kind of set it. Okay, so uh, I'm trying to get this turbulent DFSEM to work like uh, work right, and uh, I after some debugging I got it to work. So these are all the notes, and I had to make another open form case to generate uh, boundary data for this uh, inlet boundary condition because what it, what it does is to take a Reynolds stress tensor which is R uh, mixing length uh, you know file uh, with I mean various mixing length at various parts of the mesh and of course the velocity boundary data at the inlet so I had to uh, generate this data using some function objects so I did that and it ran successfully Nevertheless, uh, after all of this, uh, I'll skip this part of Windows Subsystem for Linux. Uh, okay, I, I debugged it uh, and I wrote all the notes here. Now, after solving all the syntax, the cron number still blows up. Uh, pro probably because of injected turbulence. As you can see, it was stable until 0 0.1595 seconds. And that's about the same time where, you know, if I did a cyclic boundary condition, that's about the same time where this uh, cyclic boundary condition actually starts to crash and becomes unstable as well. So, um, again, I was at a loss. So I thought, okay, maybe let me try switching off the natural convection. So, since pimple foam works, I suspect buoyant pimple foam will work without gravity. What I mean here is that, hey, uh, if I switch off natural convection and just uh, have forced convection heat transfer, uh, maybe it would help. Uh, and this thing actually crashed at 0 0.159727 seconds, which is about the same time where you, when, I mean, when you have natural convection, you crash at about the same time. So there are plans for IDDES run 8 and 9, where actually I want to uh, use the K equation instead of K omega SST IDDES or use this uh, buoyant Boussinesque pimple foam because I think I read online somewhere that uh, buoyant Boussinesque pimple foam was used for uh, DNS simulation. I just kind of ignored it because uh, I didn't want to make a Boussinesque approximation for my DNS but you know if, if, this, if this solver is more stable than let's say uh, buoyant pimple foam uh, I might consider using it anyhow. Okay. And of course, again, I can try switching off the DPDT term again in this turbulent DFSCM, but that's another story for another time. So this is where I am now, like one month into trying to simulate DNS and LES in a channel flow for heat transfer. And it's surprisingly... Well, I mean, CFD is difficult, but yeah, it is difficult. So, um, I as of today, I have not solved it, and I don't know if I'll solve this uh, simulation anytime soon. But um, I just uh, made this record for us to know, you know, what what steps I took, and maybe what are some of the next steps. But for now, I'm taking a hiatus from this so that I can focus on other stuff which I currently need to do for my studies. So. Um, Hopefully, some of some someone uh, can pick up from where I left off uh, from the GitHub, uh, which I post in the description below, uh, or maybe another time I can come back and you know take a look if I have the time to see uh, if it works. But no promises. I cannot promise anything since it's taking so long to actually resolve and debug. Yeah. <laughs>
and I don't really have the time. But uh, anyway, uh, it's a useful learning situation. You can see that uh, uh, DNS and LES is actually uh, tougher than just you know talking about theory. There's actually the, the, the bits of the solver and instabilities you actually have to debug. Um, and that takes a fair bit of time. Okay, a, a lot more time than I initially anticipated. Uh, but it is what it is, and that's the reality of turbulence modeling. Uh, so, yeah, I unfortunately could not deliver on uh, what I intend to deliver in terms of uh, simulating a heat transfer with DNS and LES uh, with a very sufficiently sm uh, with a sufficiently small mesh size, but that's where I am. Um, okay, so that, that's it for now. I, I don't have any more things to offer you except what I have done so far in my GitHub. Okay, uh, we shall see if, uh, if this thing is able to you know, finish next time uh, with you know, some other debugging steps. But uh, as of now, uh, it is just uh, like that. So thanks for watching. Uh, I will see you guys again in some other videos. Hopefully, one of you might uh, succeed where I have uh, failed. Uh, but thanks for watching. I uh, hope this was helpful. See you.